First, if you're lounging in the comfort of your sofa, or if you're thinking of even heading to bed, spare a thought for us, cocooned in the twilight world of the night shift. Last December, True North was there on the longest night. here in Northern Ireland are choosing to work at night. Over the course of one single night last year, we followed some of those people who have turned their backs on the normal nine to five in favor of working during the hours of darkness. On 21st of December, 2013, the sun set at 3.53, not rising again until 8.04 the next morning, making it officially the longest night of last year. This is what happened during the course of that night. With an anxious wait is 35-year-old Martin. From his home in Mahara, oh, he's keeping an eye on the weather. <laughs> he makes his living taking spectacular landscape photographs of Northern Ireland at night. And tonight, there's a lightning storm forecast off the north coast that he's hoping to capture on camera. Most other people are probably indoors at the moment, uh, probably watching TV and looking out for the night to have a drink. But I would rather be spending my Saturday night out trying to catch something cool on camera. That's my drive. You know, I'm, that makes me happy. There's no hangover from it. At the moment, uh, I'm planning tonight's photo shoot. I'm focusing primarily on severe weather, on storm cells, and I need that delicate marriage between weather and astronomy to come together for that shot of the right at the moment, nature is doing a lot. What actually happens on location is a different story. So we'll just have to stick it out and go on the hunt and be patient and see what happens. But Martin's not the only one who needs to be patient. His mum and girlfriend have had to get used to a man who earns his living at night. My mother and my girlfriend are always looking after me. They're so used to me coming in at five or six o'clock in the morning and coming in weird hours. And the weather's bad, I'm pretty much leaving. And and of course they probably worry a lot at night too when I'm out and they have to deal with that mental side of things but so far I've always come back and I certainly intend to. <laughs> the reaction says it all. <laughs> Every night when I raise out late, I don't say properly. I would wake up about half two, three o'clock and I'm like, I'm like <laughs> my mobile and it's like, oh no, there's no response. Mm -hmm. Martin has got text messages at that time. He's like, where are you? <laughs> I know at the end of the day, Martin has three loves. His family, the sky and me and no matter what. And the dogs. Uh, his family, the dogs, yes, the dogs. you know. Uh -huh. And no matter what, I, at the end of the day, yes, there's times where I would be like, you know, I'd love a wee day of shopping and Martin's like, there's confection. I'm like, all right, okay, I'll have to wait until tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. We're heading to Downhill Beach on the North Coast. I just want to see if there's any interesting clouds around, any lightning, uh, if there's any stars out, sort of get the feel for the, the night and then We'll trust our instincts from there on and see what happens and see where nature takes us. I love the hunt for to catch something on camera, like like lightning, anything that's transient. It's not there all the time, it just suddenly happens. And it'll never happen again the way it does that time on camera. It's very special. It's, it's, I guess it is the chase in a way, it's, uh, and the thrill, the excitement of seeing it. Longest night of the year, the start of winter in the Northern Hemisphere, and just to prove it, we've got thunderstorms over the ocean in the middle of the night, fantastic. If I get one good shot tonight, I'm happy. Yeah, we're losing visibility. Very cold, 
you get sleep, come and die. We'll probably have thick cover very shortly, so just taking a few last exposures here before we have to take shelter. Oh, that was a strong bust. The thing about weather, uh, storm photography, storm chasing, or whatever you want to call it, you have to learn to put up with a lot of disappointment if you want to see something cool. Okay, so you have a bit of car trouble here. The battery appears to be quite low down. The cars are starting up. Martin is 40 miles from home, and tonight of all nights, it's unlikely any breakdown service is going to find him anytime soon. But he's being philosophical. You can see this is a dip in the night. The car has stopped working, the lightning has stopped, it's raining. So, I hope things go back uphill again very soon. Forty miles from home with a car that won't start. Let's hope nighttime photographer Martin is as skilled with an engine as he is with a camera. I don't know much about engines, <laughs> but this happened once before. It had something to do with a starter or a bad connection. Sometimes if you give that a knock with a hammer, it can actually help it. exposures of up to 40 seconds, Martin is able to create images through his camera that are unobservable to the naked eye. There's been no more lightning for a while. It's been very cloudy, but uh, I've decided to try to shoot some night landscape shots, kind of thing I'm really interested in. Got the wide angle lens on here. Don't those castles in the foreground in the pitch dark? Just a couple of minutes ago, and a very bright satellite appeared. I happened to be taking the shot at the time and I caught the trail. It looks like a bright meteor or fireball. It's a very nice catch. Right over to this castle. That's the beautiful thing about uh, photography. It sees the light, it captures the light, it accentuates it and does wonders. Every shot is a new work of art, so to speak. And nature is painting the landscape with its light. So every place is different and every, every exposure is different. It's fantastic. <laughs> it seems there's another player in the electricity market tonight. Off the north coast, Mother Nature has decided to generate her own. The storm that Martin has been chasing has made a reappearance. Can't really take your eyes off the sky for a minute at all, you need to be sharp. If it would just uh, kindly give me a nice bolt, stick home as a nice memory from tonight, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Two bolts right down on the sea. Got it! Blew out a bit, but nice, got it. Now I relocated to Valentoy Harbour, the best place to last, my favourite location in the whole coastline. Uh, stars have come out, the moon's out, the ocean is awesome, there's massive waves crashing over the rocks. It's an awesome scene, everything's lit by the moon, there's lightning, stars, it's just beautiful, but this is really talking. I found over the years that in order to get something really cool, you have to pretty much show nature, the universe, that you're serious, that you're dedicated. And if you give up too easily and don't show what you're committed, you won't get the rewards. You don't really have control over what's going to happen. You can, you can try to predict it, you can be at the right location, but really at the end of the day it's up to nature. Nature decides what it's going to do and when. 
and to a certain extent, who's going to be lucky enough to experience it. So just being a part of that, being in the right place at the right time, and seeing a show, that's a present, that's a gift from the sky. Let's make this a shot of the night. <laughs> we got, if we had a bull coming down over there, I'd be happy. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs>